everyone, welcome back. So last time we did a analysis of an airfoil, and this time I'm going to show you how to do a, um, a batch analysis. So we'll start by going to XFOIL Direct Analysis again. You can go into the airfoil section or you can go to Polaroid, it doesn't really matter for this first part. But for batch analysis, um, I can do it with one airfoil, but I'm going to do it with two airfoils just to show you that I can do multiple airfoils at multiple Reynolds numbers and get multiple angles attack all at once. Just save you some time. So first off, we'll go with the same exact one as last time. So I'm going to go to Design, go to NAC Foils. I'm going to do the 2412. I just like that one. I'm going to click OK. And for some reason, it is really zoomed in here. There we go. What in the world were you doing? Much better. OK, so I have my first airfoil here. And that one is completely fine. But here's the thing. Um, while this can make NACA airfoils just easy peasy, what if I want a different random airfoil? What if I want to use a different airfoil in my analysis? Well, you can still use this too. So I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to go to a resource that I use quite often, which is airfoiltools.com. If I can spell it. There we go. Open it up. And then I can just search the airfoils. I can do all kinds of things. I can use these five digit or four digit generators. But that's already built into XFOIL. Um, and so for this, I'm just going to pick pretty much a random one. Why not here? And I'll choose this one. This one looks kind of cool. Now, you can take the data from airfoiltools.com and you can import that into XFlyer. To get that data, an easy way to do it is simply to look over here on the right and you'll see these four things. You can send to an airfoil plotter, you can add for a comparison, you can go to the, I don't know how to pronounce that, or you can go to the CLIC format data file. This is the one you want. Because what it gives you is just nice points that show the surface of your airfoil. Don't worry about copying and pasting it, just right click it, save as, and when you go to save it, make sure you don't save it as a text file. You have to go to all files and save and change it to a dot dat ending. So all files dot dat. You can see I've already done this before for practice. And yes, I'm going to do that. It'd probably be good to actually name this something helpful rather than just sealing dat file. Now once you've done that, go back into XFlyer 5. I already have one airfoil in here. I want to do a second one. So how do I do that? Well, I go File, Open. I find my DAT file. Here it is. And I have it. You can see it's already been imported in. If I click go back and forth, you can see the two different airfoils here. Now, same as last time, we're going to want to repanelize both these airfoils. So go to Design, Refine Globally. And the cool thing is, if I don't already have it showing the dots, showing my operating points for the panels, it will add them in when you click on this. Now, what I really want you to focus in on it while I change the number is just look at the nose of this airfoil as I change this from 99 to 100. So you can see when I did that, that it bunched up the points a lot more here because it is changing very, very quickly there. I'm going to hit Apply and then hit OK. And then I will overwrite this. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my other airfoil. So I have an air airfoil. I'm going to go to Design, Refine Globally. It's got 113 panels. I'm just going to change it to 100. Hit Enter. It still put more panels in the nose. More panels in the nose than were there previously, and it spread them out on these surfaces since they're fairly flat. Then I'm going to click, hit apply and then hit OK and then overwrite. Okay, so I now have two airfoils. I could do this with 15 airfoils, it just takes longer. Now, how do I do batch analysis? Well, you go up to analysis and you click on batch analysis. And I know it might seem silly for me to say it that way, but it's it's all you're doing. As a note, whichever airfoil you're clicking on currently will be selected, but you want to probably click both airfoils since we're doing it for both of them. When I say batch analysis, it's going to give you a lot of information here. First off, 
you can choose what Reynolds numbers and Mach numbers and transition criteria you want to do. And so there's a little more or less Excel sheet right here. If I want to, I can change this, or I can add new rows, or I can um, take out rows if I want to. So you have all these things. So I'm going to be doing various Reynolds numbers all the way from 30,000 up until 3 million. So I should get a good range of conditions with that. Then I get to choose what range of angles of attack I want, or conversely, what range of coefficient lifts I want. And so I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go from negative 6 to 10. As a note, it's saying from 0, so when it, it'll go one direction and then it will go the other. I'm going in increments of 0.5. Last thing, make sure you have these two selected, just make sure it runs properly. And then finally, right here, update polar view. If you do this, I said finally, there's one more thing after this. If you click on this one, it will automatically start putting these plots into your polar views. And you won't have to right click and tell it to show them later. Now, if you want to make this run quickly, you want to probably use every single thread you have available to your computer. I've got eight, and so I'm going to make it use eight so it can run eight times as fast, or roughly eight times as fast. When you have everything set up as you want, you just click on Analyze. As a note, I'm doing a T1 type. This is the same type we used last time for our airfoil analysis. So I click Analyze, and it's going to give you a massive amount of information. You're going to see it just begin to go crazy. Blue is for one airfoil, that's for the Onera airfoil, and the pink is for my um, NACA. And it's finished. I close it out. Now, this is way too much information for me to look at. I can't possibly take all of that in. And so what I can do instead is I can say, okay, I want to just see the NACA airfoil. And so now I can see it. Looks decent. Might have had some trouble converging here, but I think this is probably okay. If you see sudden crazy changes, there might be an issue. And you can try taking smaller steps to see if it goes away. Now, I don't want to see that one anymore. I click on the X, nothing's there. I click on this one, and now I can see it from my own air airfoil. So all of these screens are showing you. Now, here's the thing. The polar plots, they look great, and they're great for showing a ton of information all at once. Or it becomes more difficult is when I go into my airfoil plot. As you can see, there's a little bit of information there. And once again, my it is just zoomed out this guy. Not quite sure why it's doing that. I didn't do that last time. And my legend is going just absolutely bonkers. There is just way too much information here. So I strongly suggest that when you do pull it up, remove it. Just don't show it all to begin with. And the reason it's showing so much information is because for every single Reynolds number, it did, hmm, about 20 analyses. Ah, it didn't converge all the way. Look right here. You can see it stopped at eight and a half. It should have gone all the way up to 10. So at that point, it was unable to converge from eight and a half to nine, or from nine to 10. So I might rerun this and see if I can do a smaller step size to get all the way to an angle of attack of 10. Let's see if that continued up to higher. No, at higher angles of attack, it was fine. It was just for that one. Okay. Yeah, eight and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another batch analysis for the Onera airfoil. I'm going to try a smaller step size and see if I can get it to converge all the way up to um, 10 degrees in our foil. So let's go up doing that. So we're going to go to analysis, batch analysis. I'm only going to do the Onera this time, keep the same Reynolds numbers. And I'm only going to go up this time because I'm really not too worried about it. I'll start from zero. And we'll go up to 10, but we'll go in increments of 0.25 and see if it will converge all the way up. Click Analyze. Now this is complete, and I'm going to close it out. So let's go back in here and see how it did. And you can see now that it was able to go all the way to 10 degrees angle of attack. So if you find that it's not converging, it is a good idea to take smaller step size. Another cool thing is it just automatically puts this information in with the information from my previous iterations. So I don't have to worry about you know, sorting things or trying to um, order it later on. It will do it for you. Okay, last little detail here, um, just a kind of matter of sanity. When you're looking at all these data on the polar plots, it will default to all being the same color. Um, if you want to 
see a particular plot, you just need to right click or left click, I'll just do it for you, and change the color. So if I'm gonna look at this guy right here, I can change it to magenta. And now I can see my properties for um, an angle of attack of, sorry, Reynolds number of three million. And I can also check it for lower Reynolds numbers as well. So just be willing to change the colors so you can see the properties of the information that you care about. Okay, that's it for this time, covering how we can do batch analysis, and also luckily running into a little error there with conversions to show you how to deal with that. Hopefully this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.